Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Word Bible Study, a plain and simple book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse study through the entire Bible currently. We are in the book of Ezekiel, the prophecies of Ezekiel, and we're in chapter 14. And let me do just one thing as a reminder. This is a simple Bible study. So, and I, I want to say this, one, I'm not a scholar, however, but I'm not a scholar, so we don't get into scholastic studies. Now, there are plenty of resources for you to do that. Uh, sometimes it could be as simple as having a, a study Bible. Up there, as you can see, I have several. I have several Greek, Hebrew study Bibles and stuff. And the conclusion of all of my studies, which, again, is not scholastic, I'm not I don't have any accreditation. I don't have any degrees, seminary degrees. Um, um, but after reading all of that, when in my younger days, like a lot of people, I was hyped and, and geeked over studying. And I'm not even despairing that because I, I, I do love it. I, I, I'm not despairing that at all. And that's it. Up there, I have uh, a minimal arsenal, and if, if I needed to, I know where to go. By the way, you could, you know, you, you can get these things online. Uh, our world today, um, I know sometimes when you look at scholars and you look at different other people, they have shelves of books. <laughs> Excuse me. So that's just a, a pinch, a crumb, sometimes to the arsenal of other people. The difference is that... <laughs> Uh, you can get a lot of this stuff online, okay? So that's the great news about living in our time. A simple Google can open up to a lot of these resources. So again, I'm not disparaging my purpose that after all of the study, whether it's Greek, Hebrew, you go to all of that, the plain, simple reading of Scripture is the plain, simple reading of Scripture, and that's what we're doing. And that's why you never see me quote anyone, refer to anyone, uh, because you could read the Bible. And if you read the Bible, you will understand its plain, simple meaning. So we do not have the sunglasses or the glasses of any kind of ideology, theology, denominational, just a plain, simple reading of the scripture. All right, so let's get into it. Ezekiel chapter 14. Keep this in mind. Ezekiel is um, a contemporary of Jeremiah and Daniel. Jeremiah is was left in Jerusalem and Daniel was in another part of the kingdom, Babylonian kingdom, and, it, and of course rising up in the governmental government. Um, Ezekiel is in the Jewish section of the captivity. In other words, when they, they were captured, they were deported, and then they, the Babylonians settled them into um, their section. Much like if you remember, remember uh, when Jacob went down to Egypt, um, Joseph settled them into Goshen, which at the time was well, the ghetto. It was one of the best part of the. It was the one. It was the best part of the land, um, and then that's where they settled. Well, in the sense of the captivity here, so uh, the Babylonians didn't care too much what god you worship, uh, as long as you worship their gods. They didn't care. Um, they didn't care um, if you. Um, Worship your own God. So this is what they're doing. They're kind of allowing them to still exist with their culture, but they were conquered by Babylon. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, hmm. All right, here we go. Let me, my computer's been running slow as well. So, okay. So verse 14 says, some of the elders of Israel came to me and sat down in front of me. So remember, they, they, they still kind of exist as a community. 
He says, Then the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, these men have set up idols in their hearts and have put sinful stumbling blocks before their faces. Should I be consulted by them at all? Now, this is kind of harsh, right? But reality. Notice here God is saying, they have set up idols, and notice it, in their hearts. So here is the harsh reality. God knows our hearts. God knows our minds. You can't hide from it. And it's a frightening thing, but for us in the New Testament, the word propitiation, that Jesus is our peace, Jesus is the satisfaction. Okay, with that, amen. Hold on, I'm going to come out here. Okay. All right. Next time I'm having my computer's been freezing up. All right. So, and that's, I think, the first thing we need to understand is that when we come to God, we cannot, we cannot put a snow job on him, a con job. We cannot bat our eyes, smile, and we cannot, you know, um, feign anything. God knows our heart. God knows our heart. Um, so his question is now, should I be consulted by them at all? Now, so keep this in mind. God already knows. As they approach him, he he knows what's on their heart. Let me also <laughs> fast forward to the Pharisees. Now, notice that these were the elders that came down. Um, and so, it, it, you, imagine life. And by the way, this would continue on from this point on in history. The Babylonian. Exile not only was the turning point in the nation of Israel, but in the affairs of the of, of human of affairs. And Israel would be um, forever changed. In other words, as you see, kind of life now. This is what what you're going to see all the way up, practically to the present. Okay. Even now, with stuff going on in Israel, with stuff going on in Israel right now, still, <laughs> okay, uh, you have um, Israel is not a freestanding nation. All right, so, but they have their community, so they're they are allowed to kind of exist in their community. So the same thing you have with the Pharisees. Now, the Pharisees were extremely pious. They were extremely um, um, religious, okay, extremely religious. And they were incredibly evil and hypocritical. So on the one hand, they obey the law. They obey the letter of the law. They studied the letter of the law. They were the scribes. They were the teachers. They were the ones you went to if you had a question about Scripture. They could answer your questions on Scripture. But while they laid heavy burdens on you, they were hypocrites. They were greedy, adulterous, okay? Um, they bend the law, obviously, when it came to them. They, you know... Um, to the point that, and this is their sin, when Jesus came, their sin, and God help them, because think about this as we speak now, it's been 2,000 years since they have went to their eternal reward. But they, knowing the law, of course, one of their um, one of their um, complaints about Jesus is that uh, he always uh, broke the Sabbath day law, which he didn't. Now, they broke the greater law. So just to sum up one of them is what they conspired 
to frame an innocent man, Jesus. They got Judas, one of the disciples, to um, hand him over. So they lied on an innocent man. They weaponized the law against an innocent man. So, so that violated any, in any worse way than what they were accusing Jesus, which Jesus never violated the law. But, uh, and then when Judas came and told them, he said, Our, we have betrayed innocent man, blood. Basically, they told him, that's your problem. Judas throws the 30 pieces of silver on the, on the, on the ground and went and hung himself. Now, then in the most pious way, they said, well, we can't take that money and put it back into the treasury. Imagine that, how pious they were. As if God is sitting on the throne saying, well, at a boy, you frame an innocent man, let alone my son, right? The savior of the world, the son I sent. But they think God, <laughs> they think God is going to now honor them because, well, the blood money that they used to frame innocent man would not be put back into the treasury. That's how perverse religion is. See, that's how perverse religion is. And so these Jews here, they come and they said, and God is like, well, should I be consulted with them? Now, understand, God is judging their heart. Not even the weakness, not even the weakness, but their heart. Verse 4 says, Therefore speak to, to them and tell them, this is what the Lord God says, when anyone from the house of Israel set up an idol, now get this, in his heart. So notice he's not even talking about the craft because they may not even have the idols. They may not have, they, remember, they are exiled. So who knows if they even had time to set up idol worship. Now, if you go back in the Old Testament, I mean, not the Old Testament, back before the exile, the high places that you constantly read, right, the, the high places, and these were the, these places where these pagan worships were. They haven't, they haven't even probably set that up. So notice what he's telling them. This is still in their heart. So he says, this is what the Lord God says, when anyone of the house of Israel sets up an idol in his heart, puts a sinful stumbling block before his face, and then comes to the prophet, I, Yahweh, will answer him appropriately. I will answer him according to his many idols, so that I may take hold of the house of Israel by their heart. They are all estranged from me because of their idols. So this is what God says to the house of Israel right now, even though in, in, in their failure to even repent is now they have their idols. They've come to Ezekiel and says, what is the word of the Lord? Um, verse six, therefore say to the house of Israel, this is what the Lord God says, repent and turn away from your idols. Turn your faces from all of your detestable things. And when anyone from the house of Israel or from the foreigners who reside in Israel separates himself from me setting up idols in his heart and putting a sinful, a sinful stumbling block before his face and then comes to the prophet to inquire of me, I, Yahweh, will answer him myself. Now, Notice he refers to the foreigners who reside in Israel. <laughs> um, Israel was not just exclusively the descendants of, 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 of Jacob. And if you even go back and remember when they left in, uh, when they uh, left Egypt, there was they came out and it was referred to as a mixed multitude. And then the law made provisions for those who we would call it today proselyte to Judaism, but they and they were under the same blessings and curse as the Israelites. And that's what he's reiterating here. Verse 8 says, I will turn against that one and make him a sign in a proverb. 
I will cut him off from among my people. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. Verse 9. But if the prophet is deceived and speak a message, it was I, Yahweh, who deceived that prophet. I will stretch out my hand against him and destroy him from among the people of Israel. And they will bear the punishment, uh, the punishment of the one whose iniquities will be the same as that of the prophet, in order that the house of Israel may longer stray from me, follow, uh, follow me. I'm sorry, let me go in first time again. In order that the house of Israel may no longer stray from me, follow me. Follow, oh, sorry, guys. Verse 11 again. In order that the house of Israel may no longer stray from following me and no longer defile themselves with all of the tra their transgressions, then they will be my people and I will be their God. And this is the declaration of the Lord. Now, um, this sometimes we, I think we need to kind of understand some language. And that is, uh, go back to verse nine but if the prophet is deceived and speaks a message it was i yahweh who deceived that prophet now it almost makes it when you see kind of language like this it it almost seems as though god was purposely deceiving the prophet that he deceived the prophet so here we get into kind of a language right in other words you if you read this without kind of understanding the language, how people speak, then you would think that God is the one who sets the prophet up or programs the prophet to deceive the people and then turn around and judge the prophet. And that's not what, in a sense, is going on. Um, but it'd be like if we say, you know, you took my watch. Yeah, right. I took your watch. You, in other words, it sounds like I'm admitting to it, right? But I'm not. I'm actually contradicting what you're saying. All right, verse 12. It says, For the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, if the land sins against me by acting faithless, faith, faithlessly, and I stretch out my hand against it to cut off its supply of bread, to send famine through it, throughout, and to... Okay, I left my thing here. Oh, where you go? All right. Oh. So then he says, so if the Son of Man sins against me by acting faithfully, and I stretch out my hand against it to cut off its supply of bread, to send famine through it, and to wipe out both man and animal from it, even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it to deliver only uh, they would only deliver themselves by their transgressions. This is the declaration of the Lord. Stop. So I definitely have to. <laughs> um, this is an astounding verse here. Um, let's go back because I'm I'm a, I'm going to go back because a couple of things I want to address here. Um, so. <laughs> I'm going to come back to this, obviously, in the next video, because this is an astounding verse. But uh, he goes on and he says, uh, but he says, again, to, the, to the, the fact that the prophet speaks against the people. Notice he says um, the idea that he judges the people. Notice he said they would bear their punishment. And then the punishment of the one who require uh, the punishment of the one requires to be the same as that of the prophet. So the question here, again, I just want to leave with this thought, and then I'm going to definitely come back to the, that, that, that last, the one of the last statements here. But he says, both people will always be held accountable for their sin. Okay, so and we're going to kind of keep saying this throughout Ezekiel's message. Okay, so the prophets are going to be judged. And I think one of the best ways of looking at this is that when you see, when he's saying that the prophet is deceiving the people, more of the fact that God allows the prophet. That, you know, in other words, he, 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 lets, he lets them kind of run on their way and into their own destruction. All right, 
let me come out of this because obviously I'm gonna pick it up in the next in the next uh, study which again we're gonna get into some other things with the next next study here but all right guys look don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to BP the Bible perspective and as always if you have a thought or comment add it to the comment section below all comments are welcome and I'll see you in the next study